Hi there guys, what's up, this is Matt Calgary and bringing you something new, something special, something Guild Wars like. Yes guys, today we'll be playing Guild Wars 1, not Guild Wars 2, it didn't come out yet, but uh, today I'll be starting a new character for you guys, I thought it would be really nice uh, let's play, because uh, granted, I've been asked to do RPG, MMO, whatever, uh, strategy games, and I'll be doing those as well, so I just decided to start something with what I know, something that I love. Um, Guild Wars is a very old game, it's a co-op RPG, it's not MMO like World of Warcraft, it's a co-op RPG, which means cooperative online multiplayer game, a role-playing game. Uh, obviously, it has a PvP aspects to it, but uh, for the most part, it's core RPG and I will get into details as we go on through the game faster and better. Uh, so this is my list of characters that I have for now. Uh, each one of them, most of them have different professions. Some of them are the same, some of them are not. Um, the game consists of a bunch of different campaigns, which you don't have to own all in order to play the game. So let's, um, I'll go into the details as we go through the creation process. So uh, let's go and create a new character. Um, you see role playing, PvP only, role playing, Role playing characters can PvP, but when you press the PvP, you will already have a completely leveled up character ready for combat in a world of Guild Wars. But let's go for role playing. Uh, all right. Now, uh, Guild Wars divided into three different campaigns, three different mission storylines. You do not need to own all of them in order to enjoy the game and PvP content. Um, unless you want to have all certain skills, abilities, whatever. Now, I started with factions. Prophecies came first, then came Factions, and only then came Nightfall. Nightfall is special. And then there's also another uh, a real expansion called Eye of the North, but we'll get into it later on. So let's go start with Factions. It's, 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 that. it's, that's the one that I started I feel more comfortable with. So um, each one of these are different skills, different characters. Now, um, Warrior, Ranger, Monk, Necromancer, Mesmer, and Elementalist are four core classes that you can find in every single in every single um, storyline so let's go to prophecies right see warrior ranger monk necromancer mesmer elementalist back and nightfall as well warrior ranger monk necromancer elementalist and mesmer elementalist now paragon and devrish are only unique to to the campaign to the nightfall campaign but they can go into the other campaigns once again i'll explain it later on and um factions has Assassin and Ritualist since it's Asian themed uh, campaign. So, so let's start with the warrior since I like warriors. I'm a warrior character, you know. Um, let's go male, female. You know, I never had a female character. So I suppose we can. I, I don't want to play with a female. I don't like playing with a female for the sheer fact that, uh, I mean, I'm a dude. So, I mean, I don't mind staring at the, her ass all the time. But, you know, ah, what the hell. Let's go play with the chick. Right, so let's go create her look. Let's see which one I like the most. I know this is kind of boring, but bear, bear with me. It's called a playthrough, right? That's nice. She looks like a dude. Uh, too Asian. I'm not, oh, that's way too Asian. Too emo. I mean, this is not bad, right? So let's, let's pick her. Let's go hair color. Let's go make her the same color as mine. Like brownish, blondish. Face. Now, which face do I like the most? Asian, eh, Asian, mm. and then, that's not bad, kind of still Asian looking, but whatever. No, no, that's just kind of mean. Uh, so let's pick this one. Skin color, nah. Not too dark, not too white. Uh, this is about the right white person's color, right? So next, simple basic armor, nothing special. Uh, let's go put... Let's go make that all brown. I like brown. brown. Uh, let's go make her quite tall. And next. So, about name, I don't know. Uh, did I have female characters before? I don't think so. So, let's go. Uh, Mad Kawia. That sounds like Mad Kawia, right? That's about right. So, create. Now here we are, creation is done, the first outpost. Let's watch the little prequel cartoon. If there is one. I don't think there is one. Oh well. <coughs> oh, I was wrong, there is.
As you can see, the graphics are not uh, up to today's standards for RPGs and MMOs, but you get the point. This is an old game. There we go. Right, so let's get on to it, right? Nothing in our inventory. Right, all of these are NPC characters, not real characters. That's what I was talking about. For now, you are the only real character inside this particular area because this area is made just for you. This is my guild, uh, guild cape. Everybody who's in a guild has one. You can hide it, you can show it, and so on. I really do not remember what I have to do. There used to be markers here, but all right. Speak to Instructor NG. All right, I'll speak to him. There he is, an exclamation mark above his head. So let's go talk to him. Let's see what he's gonna do to us. Yes, let's begin the training. As you can see, a uh, elementalist and an assassin. Both are NPC characters. This is your party and your allies. Now, your party will be very important later on in the game. For now, you're the only person in your party. And Mia and Kisai, which are NPCs, are your allies, which means they're not really part of your team, even though they are. So let's go to the chest and pick up some weapons. Let's see what we have. We have a sword. Anything else? Only the sword? Alright, so let's go to our inventory and equip our sword. As you can see, our sword has appeared. <coughs> which is perfect. Let's speak to him again. Now, obviously, you can change armor and weapons and uh, your uh, skill tree. Now, unlike WoW and many other uh, online MMOs, this is the only set of skills you can have. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, eight. So only eight skills will be in your in your at your exposure at a time. Why? Because this game is extremely party-oriented game. It's not a single. Uh, Hey, I'm a player guy. Let's oh, I'm pretty. It's not like a simple game in which uh, you have to... Oh, I have to speak to him again. Where you have to rely on your own skills in order to defeat your opponents. No, this game is party game, which means everybody will have their own role to do in this particular uh, game. So, uh, obviously, Marker shows me here. Let's see what I need to do. I haven't played this in, in... I mean, four years, was it? Five, maybe now. Well, the last time I played the first opening mission, I do have one major character. Uh, I will show him off later on. And uh, for now, I just want to go through the tutorial. Once we get to the city, which is Xingjie Monastery over there, we will see what we have to do. Lots of talking, but uh, I guess it's a really good time to explain things. It can, as you can see, there is no voiceover for, the, for these characters right now, because this is during the game. So um, it's particularly unimportant at this time. Uh, for now, I mean, I just say, let it be, let it be. Maybe I can talk a little more about the leveling system now. Your levels are, uh, from 1 to 20, 20 being the last, the most highest level. Once again, this game is not about who has the best leveling and the best equipment. It's about your ability to play the game with the skills provided right here on this bar. Oh, this is recording. Hmm. So, uh, obviously, there's a bit of humor in this game, if you read it. <coughs> but I would definitely suggest to play and not read the game. A little drop right there. Let's just follow this fool with a stick. As you can see, the ch character animations are fluid. See our first enemy? A manted hatchling. Let's go slash it a few times. Auto attack. There you go. Got something dropped from him. Now your drops will go into your inventory. All these can be filled later on, but for now, three gold if you sell it to a merchant. You obviously can trade it with the real players, but nobody wants this stuff. I mean, this is this is nothing. The general thing that people trade are uh, weapons, uh, skill tomes, and so on. As I get these particular things, I will definitely show you what's going what's happening. Let's slap him. Let's slap him. As you can see, only thing I can do right now is auto attack, since I don't have any skills in particular. All we do is just this. There you go, another pincer. Something nice to use later on. Uh, I don't know why, but these guys are definitely much stronger. 
Uh, there's obviously a lot of different enemies in the game. For now, we're fighting these bugs. Nothing wrong about that, right? So there you go. This is a resurrection shrine. It will be in every single, almost every single area in the game. So if it is when you die and there's nobody to resurrect you, like a monk or paragon or uh, or any other uh, ally who has a skill of reviving, you will spawn in these uh, little shrines. All right, let's continue. Click him. The frame rate is nice. I'm recording with fraps, so uh, let's see. There's a shrine. Let's step in a very nice emote. Kneel. <laughs> We're kneeling. How about we dance while they're talking? Huh? Oh yeah, let's do some boogie oogie. Alright, let's talk to you. <coughs> How about... Oh, we're dead. He killed us. So, now we're gonna revive in this shrine. As you can see, you have 15 death penalty. What happens is, is that every time you die, your health and your mana, or as you want to call it, energy, uh, will go down by 15% due to the fact that you uh, have died. Each uh, profession, which are from, be it assassin or elementals, have different amount of health, different amount of uh, of mana to use in combat. Skills use both mana, and uh, for a warrior, it would be something else, which is adrenaline, will be showing up later on as you see me uh, get along with the game. In order to get rid of this death penalty, all you have to do is to gain experience. Experience can be used to purchase, uh, <coughs> I mean, all these are titles, different things you can uh, achieve within the game. Uh, obviously, some titles are throughout your entire account, and some titles are unique to your character. Oh, Imperial, what does this do? Oh. Oh, I have not known that. I, I might check this out. This is a new thing added to the game. Maybe I'll check out with my main character. So, uh, a lot of talking, a lot of boring, boring talking. Can we get to the game? Alright, alright. Yes, variety of effects. Continue, please. So, yeah. Uh, obviously, each... Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, that's skills. What was the skills? Oh, there you go. Attributes, right? So, what happens is that as a warrior, you have... Five attributes you can use. Oh, strength. Let's put this skill on. No, we already have this skill on. It is strength, axe mastery, hammer mastery, swordsmanship, and tactics. Each time you level up, you have an ability to increase one of these. And each will have an effect on an ability like you have right now. For example, this is revive. You can use it once. It's healing, healing signal, actually. You can use it every two seconds, four seconds, actually, to gain some health. Obviously, effects are described in skill ability. This is attack, as you can see, uses 5 of blue, which is 5 of uh, energy, and it's 3 seconds long until it recharges, thus plus 10 extra damage. So, uh, let's get to the wall, I suppose that's what we have to do, or we have to talk to that guy. Let's walk straight backwards, alright, let's get it. <coughs> All right, there we go. Now we have to do some fighting again. All right, open the sesame, boy. All right, good. I give you just an example of what's gonna happen. This is your healing signet. You're gonna have plus 82 health, but remember, you're gonna have less armor, so that's also gonna be affected if you do it in the middle of the combat. So let's uh, go and uh, activate our first set of skills. On this fool. <coughs> Let's do plus. Nice 13 damage. Attack, attack. Once again. Ah. Our attack got interrupted because the enemy has died. And good, our party is doing the job. You can see we gained 25 experience. Experience is shared experience. So the less people you have in your party, the more experience you personally will get. Uh, I would definitely suggest to go full party. Experience is not as important. Especially after you, uh, after you apply yourself uh, to a team game. For now, experience is important because you really want to level up as fast as you can. But there's no excuse for not taking a full party with you to these areas in order to survive. Because believe me, 
you want to survive, you will uh, want to do everything in your power to do that. Uh, as you can see, I just equipped the little fist thing to give me some more energy. As a warrior, energy is not really what you want to do. Uh, as a warrior, you really want to have a shield or a two-handed weapon if you want to play a proper warrior. Obviously, there are different things you can do with a warrior. For example, I can always equip uh, a staff, but what's the point of me equipping with a staff? I can't use my abilities for that matter, right? So let's just use a staff just to show an example of what kind of damage you will do. There you go, it's a ranged weapon and you will do like 5 damage, 6 damage. But after equipping this, let's just put this on the wrong place. Equipping this, you can do much more damage much faster. Plus, you have armor um, that helps you survive and obviously your allies will be, uh, will be supporting you as you are not a particularly tank character, but you are something that will uh, take most of the damage in and stay alive doing so. You can see I picked up some gold. Every time you pick up gold, gold, or uh, for example, yeah, gold, it will be shared between your party. So if you have three gold, correct? I only got one. I mean, I got three of them, but that's because uh, they were shared inside. Considering that I like hammers, I will be using hammer from now on. It's a two-handed weapon, meaning that this Kesta will not give me effect that it has. As you can see, 18, 18. Not plus three energy. But I like hammers, and I will uh, definitely suggest to everybody to use them. Let's talk to instructor Nig or NG or and guy, whatever it is. Got a 200 experience and resurrection. Seen it? What happens is you can use this once a time, once, once, one time in the area to resurrect one of your parties. However, if you kill a boss character, this will recharge, and you can use it later on. So let's spend our attributes. Now, uh, since I'm lying hammers, and I uh, use hammers most of the time, let's increase our hammering for, uh, let's see, two, and let's increase our tactics, so our healing signal will give us more health. At this point, we are pretty much done with uh, this tutorial, and we will get into something more serious, which is gaming, gaming and stuff, so there you go. Five energy points every single time. Like our ball hammer, very nice. Uh, I think I think it's set to highest settings I have, correct? Graphics. Yep, full screen, larger, everything, everything's on. That's probably why uh, there's only 26 frames per second. Full screen gamma, everything's good. Let's do this. Perfect. Alright, so he waved us by. I guess now we can go uh, press map. As you can see, the maps are quite huge. All of this can be explored, and most of it. And, uh... Alright. So as you can see, I told you I lost a lot. A lot of memory how to do this shit. Now, when you level up, just as this guy said, you're not set to whatever you want to do. Now, maybe right now, in this particular area, I can't change anything, correct? Let's do strength or armor penetration. But I can't change anything after. Once you get in an outpost or a corner hole city, you can change them up any way you like. It gives you fluidity of game. It doesn't bound you to only one particular uh, thing to do in the game, which means if I want to be a hammer this time, I'll do everything for hammer. If I want to be a sword, I'll do everything for sword. So, uh... That way, you're really uh, free to do what you want, uh, and it's done with every single character. The reason why I'm showing you a warrior is because it's the simplest character to follow, simplest character to show, and I would definitely suggest to use a warrior if you just want to have fun with the game and not be really uh, one to take care of your team in terms of health or, uh, for example, buffs and debuffs, shouts, and so on. So I would definitely suggest to... Uh, <laughs> to play a warrior it's really fun I mean I've been warrior in every single game so far and uh, I've never complained about it every game has its own warrior and guild was by far the best warrior class uh, in the game to use so now we're gonna probably go back to the area we've been before we have a nice bunch of loot for the first try we have four items that we do not need any longer this is extras, never mind that. Weapon sets are uh, F1, F2, and so on. So we're gonna sell all of this for however money they're worth. Maybe not at all, we got six gold so far. 
Um, the currency in this game is quite uh, not not easy. There's a bunch of things you uh, you can trade with players, not gold necessarily. Uh, once we get to the city, I will show you the inventory of my entire account. So uh, there it is. Let's talk to Ludo to gain access to Shinjia Monastery. Yes, let's go. And uh, let's go into the monastery. There you go, loading screen. This these are quite uh, <laughs> popular within the Guild Wars. Uh, I will be back once the loading is done. I'm not sure when it's be done. So uh, peace out. So here we are through the magic of cut and paste. We are in a uh, monastery. So there you go, our first glimpse of main care of uh, of real players. This is an assassin. This is a ritualist. A bunch of NPCs here as well. Main character. I mean, uh, this is all amazing. I mean, we are right now in District Two, so it's quite empty right now. So let's move ourselves to District One and see what what that that's gonna do to us. So here we are. Districts are like you can say servers, and uh, here we are. Let's let the textures to load. And we'll see uh, more people hanging around here. As you can see, lots and lots of people in the cities. This game is still alive and thriving. So anyway, um, obviously each outpost will have people in it. And uh, I mean, this is emote, a dense emote for special effects. I mean, it's quite awesome. Now we'll show you some uh, bits. You see, I have a friend online. Um, this is a storage. Now, um, as you, as a count, you can have as many characters as you wanted you saw in the beginning, but storage lets you. Uh, oh. Oh really? Where's my Zoom like storage? Where's it at? Where's the chick? There you go. Yeah, fifty gold. So, oh wait, I don't have fifty gold. I have to order fifty gold. Oh, I completely forgot about that. So let's go out and uh, sell some things. Press press Alt and find a merchant. So um, there we are. Uh, there's skills, costume, more. Yeah, those are extra things. But what I'm looking for right now is a merchant. So there you go. There's a bunch of merchants over there. Simple merchants. Let's go try and sell our stuff to them. And uh, See how it all goes, and then we prepare ourselves uh, for a nice, nice adventure outside of the walls of the city. So let's sell what we have. We have uh, bones for twelve gold. Sell, sell. Let's. You, know, you can't even sell that. So let's sell this. We have twenty gold in total. Let's go out here and destroy this since we can't even sell. We don't need to use it. Uh, as you can see, your your uh, weapon does not show inside the cities. Nothing actually shows inside your city, your armor and your cape. Um, let's go talk to the headmaster Zan, because he might give us some gold to use, costumes and stuff like that. People like wasting real money on the video game. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a huge collector of warrior armor, and I will show you every piece of armor that I have. 20 gold, I think that took... Alright, let's go talk to a, another NPC character, uh, which is probably outside of the city. We have 40 gold total, so... Uh, this is amazing. Now, um, you can ask any of these players to be in your party. As you can see, party max of four. Uh, uh, let's do it ready. Whatever. Uh, party max of four. Um, now, you don't need to play with a real player. There's something called uh, mercenaries or uh, henchmen, which are pretty much these characters, which are uh, NPCs who fight with you. How amazing is that? You need to, you need to ask for a full party. You can just simply come to them and go ahead. There you go. We have an elemental as a hero. Let's go add a healer as a hero. And let's go add who else? Uh, let's go add. We have warrior already, right? Let's go ahead. Assassin as a hero. Amazing. You formed a party. Now, since I have 50 gold already, and I really want to show some nice uh, things you can have in this game, let's go up the stairs, huge stairs, to our storage once again, buy our access to the account. And uh, maybe grab some equipment. Maybe grab something that we can use in order to uh, favor us in this uh, bloody battle to the future. And at that point, uh, we'll probably take a little break. So let's talk to our agent. Amazing firework display going on for a title. 
uh, which are let's go purchase and what what I don't have enough gold oh I guess I have to complete the mission first wow <laughs> that was ironic all right so I guess we're gonna venture forth and collect some gold right hi oh wait I didn't click enter people you will be on YouTube there we go so let's go out and I will show you what I mean as you can see people are going out of the area right now so uh, let's go in our mission is outside of the bounds of the city and here we are here we are we're outside of the city we are alone as you can see this area is only for us only things you, can, you will find here is uh, other NPC characters and us and enemies of course so that's what I mean by co RPG it's not MMO because there's not a lot of MMOing outside of the cities but when you have real people instead of these henchmen it becomes a cooperative online role-playing game which is just as fun there we go so let's collect this and go back inside or you can just press map and double click on the city as you can see there's a lot of areas there's a bunch of cities a bunch of different uh, things you can do within it obviously not everything is accessible because this is just a map full map but you will be able to access all of this I will explain the red lines in the future so let's go back to the city by pressing map and Xingjia right there here we go in <coughs> so now that we're done and we have another skill for the sword but we don't need it so we're gonna press K and remove this from our list of skills we do not need it anymore as I remember as I can say you can lower higher there's nothing is set so let's go to our storage account and uh, equip ourselves for the battle to come uh, these tablets are for new players I know exactly what I'm doing so I will not be employing uh, into them but if you guys do not know what Guild Wars is and you want to check it out uh, you know you can read them later on show me my storage account that's nice all right there we go now my storage is, is not that big you can buy these with real money but I deserve not to four years anniversary I've been in the game for four years well everybody gets it but I know I've been for games for more than four years so there's armor for my character of ghost Amel now my character Matt Kawana Kaw Kawaya cannot wear these things at all these are only for my uh, warrior male warrior character they cannot wear it oh this is nice they have updated some looks on the car on the armors I really did not know that that's nice anyway so let's go in and uh, see a few consumables you know a little miniature mini pad what happens is that you see that little person it appears and walks around I have a bunch of them all for a whole of monuments which will be explained in the future a warrior tone which are very nice so I might use these what happens is these are drops what you can do with these is actually double click them and you can learn any skill you want which is good for me because I can be able to do a uh, you can buy them from real players not a big deal obviously some more armor for my different characters um, my storage is always full see there's a bunch of consumable items that you can use nice oppressors hammer be able to use them and nine hammer master I don't have nine so I can't use it properly but see there's a, a bunch of different consumable items you can use within the game uh, you know uh, star transference skill points got another skill point amazing that's really nice so um, all of this is a pretty much free stuff you can use once again more miniature characters uh, uh, I have a lot of characters who are mules and what I mean by mules they allow me to um, I use them as storage extra storage so let's go and create our first build you can buy these from uh, from the skill masters within the city I will show you one right now uh, skill masters so uh, let's see are right there skill master so what you do is when you have a skill point what you can do is you waste it and you can buy it for example uh, you can buy skills and uh, use them in your build Ooh, quite laggy right now but uh, alright 
Let's just go and activate skills. <coughs> so here we are guys, back in Guild Wars and uh, for now we're going right to that uh, skills merchant before I actually buy any skills from my tomes. Now I had a little lag out but there you go, we have uh, one skill point and it costs 50 gold to buy from them. Now how many skill points do I have? I don't really see but you see all these skills that we have here? Right? We have them right here in our tomes as well. So um, let's for example pick a skill right here. We have uh, X mass reader need but let's go pick a for example skill like this. Hammer attack, 7 hits if targets suffering from weakness, deep wound for 2 seconds. Deep wound is like lowers their ability for a few minutes. But uh, since I want something that helps me a lot, let's just pick something easy, something simple to use. For example, um, let's see, crude swing, learn. Right, awesome. What's next? Uh, let's learn, for example, renewing smash. Learn that. Let's also learn something from strength, something that will give us armor penetration and uh, something that will help us with our hammering uh, stance, right? Let's pick. Nah, that's not cool. Uh, for example, hmm, hmm, hmm. Lion's Comfort is good, Griffin Sweep. <coughs> I mean, Griffin Sweep is nice, but let's go Flail. Frail, flail, but that also I move slower, but then again, I'm a, I'm a warrior. I don't need to move fast. Let's learn flail. And maybe one more uh, skill from our tactics tree, since we do have some tactic skills. Uh, let's learn. Mm -hmm. uh, shield bash, sword. We don't need that. Uh, maybe one more hammer skill, right? Irresistible blow. Let's learn that. Oh, we still have one more. Let's put this over here. One more. Let's see. Belly smash. Huh, that's funny. Uh, ah, why not? All right, crush and blow. So now that we bought all the skills, let's put them in order of activation so we know which ones are better for which. For example, only if this target is knocked down, right? So let's move this somewhere towards this area. Attack and so each for your head. This is really good for getting adrenaline. So we're gonna put this first. Then we're gonna put this first. Another energy skill. Another energy skill. Oh, all of them are energy skills except this. So let's put this somewhere here. And maybe we can go buy some nice adrenaline skills since we gotta have a lot of adrenaline, right? Mighty Blow is good and. Wow, Yeti Smash is nice. Uh, let's see, Fierce Blow. Huh. They really did nerf the hammers, didn't they? Well, I'm pretty sure there's some other skills that can help me, but, you know, for the sake of, of, of this, let's do this. Asked by that, whatever. So anyway, a lot of uh, energy skills, so, uh, let's just put some adrenaline skills in, just for the fun of it. So let me just buy any adrenaline skill I know. Right, let's buy this, and let's buy yeah, something that gives damage to a special blow. Let's go. So there we go, we have our old skills that we just bought, so let's go, energy, energy, nice adrenaline skill, after that we're gonna get some more energy hits right here, so let's 14 damage and plus 4 damage, let's remove this skill and put in some another nice adrenaline skill, where is it? There you go, nice adrenaline skill, and uh, for that we're gonna rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, because by the time we reach this we're probably gonna have enough energy to reactivate. So uh, there we are. Ready for combat, uh, ready to go, but you know what, the actual combat and the stuff we'll show you next time, because I think this is long enough for the first uh, installment of a Let's Play with uh, Mad Cow's uh, stuff, but uh, we, we have some nice name for this, so uh, 
next time you, we will see uh, the combat and uh, pretty much the storyline of the game. So thanks for joining me. This was Matt Cow Gamer, and peace out.